What's up, Meg? What's up? We're back at it, and uh, a lot of a lot of Halloween candy in the studio. We got some candy corn. We got some Skittles. It's because we're getting close to Halloween time, and no spoilers. But we have a special edition Halloween episode coming up next week because it's going to be the day before Halloween, and it's pretty dark and twisted. Very dark and twisted to the point where I don't think I've really slept since I've done the research on this. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, Zach, hopefully you come back quickly because I'm sick of doing research. So congratulations again <laughs> on that, baby. And also congratulations to all the podcasts on the Deluxe Edition Network. We're part of it and we're super excited to be part of it. And also shout out, probably the last shout out. Now there'll be two more shout outs for the podcast of the month, the um, Terror Tuesday in the Graveyard Club. Go check them out, deluxeeditionnetwork.com. This is an interesting episode, and we, uh, my, Meg and myself, were giggling because it's labeled episode eighteen. We're on episode twenty nine right now, and uh, this was one that Zach <laughs> did right. It was the last one that he did before um, before taking a break because uh, having a baby apparently takes a lot of time, especially if you have a couple. So we're gonna read it as it is on behalf of him. It could be interesting. It could be. Uh, ama- it's going to be amazing. But <laughs> so if you hear me saying like I'm Zach or any point, like I'm just reading the teleprompter. So, <laughs> so it'll be interesting. Uh, super excited. Like I said, I haven't read this yet. Meg hasn't read it. But if you read the title, it's about the Las Vegas mole people. And uh, have you heard of them before? I have. I have too. But I haven't like, I haven't really. I haven't really like delved into it at all that's the word i was looking for Is that delved. The word? Delve? i don't think so delve, but maybe delve, delve. either way i don't know a ton about it but i'm super <laughs> excited what zach was able to come up with and uh i don't know i'm gonna i'll say we do the intro and uh let me get into this you ready yeah all right when when should we do the intro hi i'm egg <laughs> and i'm matt <laughs> This no, is not that intro. <laughs> the Your Town Podcast. No, the music one. Like this one. When you usually go, no. Where did they go? So it's edited, but unedited because I was supposed to read this part and then do the intro according to Zach's notes, but I butchered it. So we're going to do this. The lights of the Las Vegas Strip can be seen from outer space. The ding, and he put the ding in in, um, Italia. um, Italics? Yeah, that's. I'm having a hard time. (laughs) I feel like I got a concussion yesterday, which I did either way. The ding (laughs) of the ringside bell at the Caesars Palace is part of the ethos, ethos of boxing. That's a fancy word. You can tell he wrote it. It is largely considered the entertainment capital of the world. But if you zoom in past the hum of traffic, past the bustle of tourists, down through the iconic skyline and past the neon glow, under the city lives an entirely different civilization of people marginalized and cast aside by mainstream. Prostitutes, drug addicts, the mentally infirm, fugitives and runaways called the underside of the Las Vegas home. These are the Las Vegas mole people. And this is the Your Town Podcast. And then this is where we say our names. And then you put roll intro. Nailed it. So <laughs> now that we did that, we find ourselves Fixed in problem in Vegas because my dear sweet co-host, this is what he wrote, and, and I obviously know I'm, I'm reading it as there, but he he wanted to do this as the timing because uh, Meg and myself we recently returned from a trip out there months ago. <laughs> and uh, uh, we ended up getting marriaged out there. So he put congratulations and uh, marriaged, marriaged. We got marriaged. <laughs> so he said, congrats for tying the knot. And sure, the Elvis impersonator of rock and roll Jesus really made the night spectacle. Um, happy for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> so happy we got marriaged. Marriaged. Man, I'm sorry to anybody that's listening to this, but we're having a good time. And hopefully you are, too. <laughs> All right. So picture this. You have a busy overpass on the outskirts of Las Vegas. Are you picturing it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cars are rushing by in the hot, hot Nevada desert sun. Can confirm? Very hot. Pretty hot. The shot tracks back to show. What? The shot tracks back to show a tarp flapping. Did I read? Like like a video shot. shot. Oh, the shot track. He's painting the picture. Oh, Picasso over here. The shot tracks back to show. A tarp flapping over the opening of a storm water culvert. 
but it isn't the round steel or black plastic ones we see around here. This is a massive six foot by 10 foot corridor. You push the tarp aside and you're hit with the smell of feces, urine, body odor, decay, fires. Hmm. So most of Vegas still. A pile of trash shifts to your right. You look down and kick it. And instead of it being nothing or a raccoon or something, it's a human being with a needle in their arm. You look up and further down the drainage, uh, drainage chute, you see the walls are covered with graffiti and smeared with materials best left unsaid. Littered about on either side of you are piles of human tragedy. Living, breathing human beings in piles of their own meager, filthy possessions, hoping a huge storm doesn't come through and flush them out. And if you had the ability to chase the over 600 miles of tunnels, which crisscrosses the underbelly of Vegas, you'd find hundreds of people living like this. So why are they here? I don't know. You have any guesses? Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. So according to various media reports, Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia in the shot. I wonder if that's how they named it. They're like, oh, what should we name this? Wikipedia, Wikipedia. What about Wikipedia? <laughs> I get it now, Wikipedia. In the Shine a Light Foundation, <laughs> more on them later. The predominant reason that these people seek refuge in these tunnels is for protection from the brutal temperatures Vegas experiences at different parts of the year. In the summertime, temperatures can soar well beyond 100. And in the winter, they can drop below freezing once uh, night hits. Living underground provides these homeless individuals protection from not just the elements, but these temperature swings as well. Hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Another huge region, reason is the housing market. Overwhelmingly, even your red-blooded American 9-to-5 middle-class citizen can't really afford property in the greater Las Vegas metropolitan area. So most need to rely on the vetting process of housing authorities, landlords, and that's where a lot of these people kind of march toward the tunnel and uh, where they begin their lives there. The overwhelming majority of these living in these conditions are obviously, as he mentioned earlier, drug addicts, sex workers, fugitives, felons, degenerate gamblers, etc. Far from the types of people like landlords and housing authorities really want renting and living in the uh, community amongst the straight edged or at least straight edged enough to have a bank account or credit score. People, you know, looking for condos or apartments or, and whatever else in the area, they just kind of don't fit. They have little to no money, no credit or access of any kind. They were commonly on public assistance and welfare prior to dropping off the grid and then descending into the tunnels. I mean, yeah, I can see that. Tough. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. So uh, to put a face to this, Insider.com did a piece on these conditions in 2019. In that story, they actually um, in, kind of introduced a couple named Tommy and Shay and are both in their mid-50s at this time. Tommy is admittedly savagely addicted to crystal meth so much that he has a criminal record and he was turned away from private landlords and all forms of public assistance. Shay and Tommy had been together nearly a decade at that point and Shay who was on welfare and living in a subsidized apartment with furniture, running water, bathroom, cat, dog, decided to leave that all behind once her husband was evicted and followed him into the tunnels just outside of Caesar's Palace. Man, I'm glad we didn't stumble upon those tunnels. Mm -hmm. What a sight, though. Have you have you looked at any of the pictures or have you seen that documentary that, that he was referring to? No. Or no, sorry, it was Insider.com, not a documentary, but either way. So at the time, the insider interview, they, um, they, the two of them had a small cubicle of a sorts, which they called home. They had a cardboard front door on which they wrote Aloha. The walls were adorned with Hawaiian prayers. They had a mattress, various boxes arranged into kind of um, crude furnishings and storage, a camp stove and a pot and two carpets. The story made no mention of which one or if both were of Hawaiian descent. But Tommy did admit to um, still being a meth addict. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Like, do they just love the Hawaii? Maybe it's a dream like, hey, eventually we're going to get to Hawaii. Maybe. That would be a, uh, if they find a tunnel from that one that connects to Hawaii, <laughs> that would be wild. Right. Hmm. The Insider article also details the violence and frankly terror ever present in these conditions. The biggest and most ominous, uh, ominous being floods. I mean, after all, there are storm drains. If Vegas gets hit by a storm, the water needs to go somewhere, and that somewhere is where the uh, these displaced people call their home. When a storm begins, residents know that they only have minutes to get all their possessions and everything before they're washed out and into the open air. Depending on where you live in the tunnel, the risk of being swept up by surging water and tumbling debris varies greatly. 
or if you're like Tommy and just uh, kind of hit the pipe, you very well could not be aware of the danger and you could just end up being dead, which that is terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all seen flash floods and everything else. And like, kind of like you said, if you're at the end of the tunnel, maybe you're there. But if you're dead middle, I don't know tunnel systems, but it has to get a little bit tricky. Well, and you got to think too, like any kind of big event that happens like that, where there's a lot of people and there's mass panic, mm -hmm. they're all rushing to the same place at the same time. You're going to have that congestion. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's only certain places I would imagine to get on ladders to get through, you know, up from the tunnels like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And that's going to be scary. Whew. But again, obviously, besides, um, aside from the flash floods, these tunnels are inhibited by less than, you know, savory folks. Violence is rampant. The insider interviewed another mid-50s woman named Angel, Angel, who had been living in the tunnels for over five years at the time of the interview. She explained how there is zero surveillance down there, no cameras, no public servants. Nobody comes down and checks the tunnels. The only time police show up is in response to a call from a nearby neighborhood, at which time the residents are forced out into the streets once again. And in the shadow of this negligence, uh, human atrocities can be committed. Uh, apparently, this witness did claim to see firsthand a homeless person cut off the fingers of an artist, I guess, in quotes, who was living in the tunnels at the time. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, there, there, there's no rules. There's, I mean, that's kind of a thing, you know, where people are just like, hey, you really want to live in an area with no cops and no rules, no law? Go to the Vegas tunnels for a couple of years and see how that uh, would work out for you. So you might be asking, uh, what's being done about this? This is living history. This is a situation going on developing right now as it's being recorded, not just like a typical old and dusty history. Like this is current to alleviate the struggle of those living in the tunnels. Organizations like Shine a Light Foundation are going out into these communities, performing outreach and offering services. Shine a Light, the, uh, their organization motto is bringing humanity to those living underground. Seem to kind of be leading the way on the front of this. And, uh, among other things, their seven-step program to rehabilitation um, is, um, you know, got to be a pretty good thing for those that are actually wanting the help. And they name, name this program IPATH, Instant Placement with Access to Treatment and Housing. Um, so again, it begins with the shine of light workers descending into the tunnels for outreach, where they offer services and hand out critically needed supplies like water, food, socks, flashlights, headlamps, batteries. So if a displaced person takes shine up on their offer for help, they are allowed to begin the two year project. The goal of which is to ensure that there is no reason to ever feel like anyone, um, needs to, you know, go back to their previous life or situation. So hmm. two years, I feel like that's a ample amount of time that you can make a difference, you know, in your life and your, your mentality and everything like that. Two years to kind of make sure, Hey, I, I wonder if it's like contracted, like you have to, I don't know. And I'm also wondering like the success rate, you know <coughs> what I mean? Do they have a huge success rate of, of people that make it through the program and they're good? Do they end up going back? <laughs> we'll have to follow up on this and find this, uh, this article, or we'll have to follow up with Zach and get some, some answers. Or if you're listening and you know, let us know in the, in the social media. Um, this organization was founded by Matthew O'Brien, an author, journalist, and grassroots organizer, uh, has a book beneath the neon chronicles, which he has experienced in his 20 plus years of working with those living under the streets of Vegas. So if you're hearing this and you would like to help shine a lights website offers several ways to donate, which they got the PayPal, Amazon wishlist, all that stuff. So it's also a way, uh, a couple of ways to establish a monthly reoccurring donation. And if you're in the Vegas area and really, really want to help out. You can be a hands-on volunteer. Apparently, you just have to go to shinealightlv.com for Las Vegas. Hmm. So there you go. Didn't realize this was um, this was a Shine a Light episode. So maybe Zach's maybe Zach's got some inside information on that. I was really hoping for some more details on the dark stuff. Is that weird? Or no? <laughs> I had so many other questions. Like you know what I mean? Mm. But I guess I get the gist of it. They're living in a tunnel. A lot of nasty smells and stuff it is you know sewage tunnel violence no crime or no law <laughs> lots of crime just some sketchy stuff but it, you know maybe not going overly into the details is a a good thing because in this next episode we left a lot of details out but the the stories are whew, you wait you want to know what it is you want a little spoiler should no. we give them a little spoiler what it's going to be about okay you get no spoilers no spoilers no spoilers all right as always we are going to hit you with the sources in a quote so uh, the quote that Zach had is, you cannot do kindness too soon. 
for you never know how soon it will be too late. Ralph Wald Emerson. We got some sources, 8newsnow.com, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, insider.com, shinalightlv.com, and rd.com. So that's uh, where the quote came from, Reader's Digest. So what do you think? What do you think of the mall people? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, it's not a cool story by any means because... No, I well, might have to like do some more delving. Ooh, let's delve in it <laughs> with our marriages. <laughs> what is it? What is the word? But, well, so why... What, Marriage. Marriaged. What um what makes you kind of have lingering questions? What what else do you want to dive into? I don't know. I guess I just I'm curious. I know. Me too. More about like the actual conditions and I don't. I guess I'm just curious. Me too. And I feel like it, uh, there, there's just some other people that are curious as well. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look into it a little bit more. And if we have some more information, some stories, stuff like that, and uh, maybe some videos, pictures, whatever else, we will. Make sure to post it to our social medias. Feel free to follow us on anything you want. You know, the Spotify, the Apple Musics, the Instagrams, Facebook. Are we on Facebook? I think we're on the Facebooks. We got it all. Check it out. Can't thank you guys enough. YouTube, we're starting to climb up there. We hit over 100, so congratulations, Meg. Over 100 subscribers. The first 100 I heard is the hardest, so. <laughs> all right, so we can't thank you guys enough. Hopefully, you have a good rest of your day whenever you're listening. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but... The next one, no spoilers. It's going to be a good one, a dark one. And uh, yeah, that's all we got. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. You good? You got anything else to say? Nope. All right. And uh, big shout out, Zach. Thanks for that episode on the mole people. And uh, all right. So we got, we're getting, we're getting attacked by flies. We're going to get out of here. So uh, all right. Have <laughs> a good so rest of your It's really annoying. It's so annoying. But uh, all right. Take care, everybody. Bye.